All right, Shalom, Brother Ara, coming to you with another video. I want to give all praise, his honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father and his only begotten Son, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash. Double honor to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone for teaching us the 100% truth according to the Bible. And Ruel, double Shalom to all you Akim and you Akwath, those of the hopeful elect that are diligently seeking for salvation and I wanted to go into Second Ezra, the 15th chapter, specifically the 14th verse down to verse 19. Why is that so important? Well, you know, we're living in those times. The scriptures say, rather you prophesy. And we're getting ready to enter into uh, a major transition. The, le the next level in prophecy is this is a year of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shire turn up. Okay. And he is turning up. So without further ado, I want to bring out second Ezra 15 and one. It says, behold, speak thou in the ears of my people, the words of prophecy. The words of prophecy are found in the Bible. No other doctrine, book, philosophy, anything you can think of contains prophecy. And one of the one of the proofs that the Bible is the truth. Everything that the Bible spoke of before it came to pass all right, that the Lord sent his prophets to preach and to teach have came to pass. OK, matter of fact, let me get a priest up here and I'm going to jump back. OK. Um, I want to bring out. Isaiah 55 and six. Matter of fact, yeah, Isaiah 42 and nine, which is what I want. It says, behold, the former things are come to pass. And new things do I declare all the former things that the Lord spoke of through his prophets. You know, one thing that pops in my mind is Noah, when he prophesied through the spirit of the great flood. And that eventually came to pass. You know, the prophecy of 70 AD of us going into slavery, all of all the curses that would befall us if we didn't hearken to the words of the Lord came to pass. OK. So all the former things that the Lord spoke of came to pass. One of the proofs that, you know, the Bible is true. OK, and it says new things do I declare. And we're going to go into some of those new things. But one of the new things that I want to speak of and a few list of other things are what Yahweh spoke of um, to the disciples and the Mount of Olives privately. War, rumors of wars, nation against nation, uproars of the people, earthquakes in diverse places, famine, pestilence. Those are new things that the Lord is declaring. It says, before they spring forth, I tell you of them. The words of prophecy, the Lord tells you of them through his prophets. And that's what we are sent to do from the apostles. All right, down to us younger brothers. Okay, and now reading on 2nd Ezra 15 and 1 says, Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy. The Lord's people are the Israelites, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, the scattered Israelites who look like heathen nations, but are Israelites. Okay, it says, which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord. Verse two says, and cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. Okay, and it's sure to come to pass. Everything the Lord has been speaking of through his prophets have been taking place. You know, you're seeing um, the, um, you know, Gog and Magog rising up to the occasion, you know, the weapons of the Lord's indignation, the ICBM missiles are being prepared. Pestilences is at an all time high. Division is at an all time high. The Lord says he's coming to bring division, right? Famine is taking place. Much uproars of the people across the four corners of the earth. Proof is in the pudding. All right. Now it says, I'm going to jump down to verse 14 just to get into the lesson. It says, woe to the world and them that dwell therein. Verse 15. For the sword and their destruction draweth nigh. Destruction is drawing nigh. And we're seeing it through the spirit. Those of us who are measuring the times. You can tell we're getting ready to enter into the next level. Now, these people are crying for peace because they can remove their face coverings. They don't have to show proof of, you know, them taking the you know what. So everyone thinks things are going back to normal. They think they can start traveling more. 
without restrictions, but we're entering into another level in prophecies. It says, uh, now the scriptures say, when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction shall come upon them as a woman um, that prevail, but travaileth upon child, Salakia. Okay, I'm roughly paraphrasing. But reading on, it says, and one people shall stand up and fight against another and swords in their hands, nation against nation. There's going to be a civil war. There's going to be class wars, uproars of the people, gang wars. There's going to be gender wars. There's going to be so much taking place in these times, especially in America. Now, reading on, and they're going to have swords in their hands, weapons, particularly the modern day uh, sword is are the guns. Many guns enough to go around in America, man. Each just about the average household, okay, um, has a weapon or more, okay, on average. Now, verse sixteen says, "For there shall be sedition among men, and invading one another." And sedition goes into inciting others to rise up against the opposition. And, I, and, and particularly uh, an authority. And there's going to be, it says, and invading one another, going into other people's um, private houses, okay, in their space. And it's going to tell you why as we read on. It says, they shall not regard their kings nor princes. When you don't regard your king nor princes, the leaders of this society from your local state to federal level meaning you're not going to um, take heed to their uh, commands when they're going to tell you, hey, stop the rioting, you know, uh, reduce the crime. They're going to try to put in a curfew in place, but these people are not going to give a damn about that. It's going to say, it reads on, uh, in the course of their action shall stand in their power. All right. Now, this is going to be a result of all these things. Verse 17, a man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. And that is called martial law. Martial law will take place in your lifetime. They're going to have, you know, they're going to have different um, military authority uh, situated where you can't go in and out of a particular city. OK, or, or the city near you. This is going to be their answer, the elites answer to all the chaos that what they are really stirring up. Verse 18 says, for because of their pride, the city shall be troubled. So all these cities are going to be troubled because of their pride. These people have the luxury of living life without any, you know, uh, any worries. They've been comfortable. You know, it's been a very selfish society. No regard for the higher power, Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, which we don't expect a society, this wicked society, be to be referencing Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. But you know, the pride of this place has been increasing at an all-time high. So the Lord is gonna is gonna humble them with a dramatic effect. Now it says, the houses shall be destroyed and men shall be afraid. So these, you know, these uproars and riots that's getting ready to take place is going to be a lot of destruction going on. Houses are going to be ravished, burnt down, windows and, you know, roofs and all that going to be destroyed. You know, doors going to be kicked in. I said the men are going to be afraid. So you already know everyone's going to be afraid, right? But the Lord said, at destruction and death, thou shalt laugh at it. T speaking of the servants, the Lord is going to protect you know, so there's going to be two sides of the coin. You're going to have majority of people catching hell, afraid, in misery, okay, uh, fearing for their lives. But then you're going to have, you know, the servants of the Lord is going to be, you know, fed during a time of famine and receiving protection, witnessing these things that are going to be happening around them. Verse 19 says, a man shall have no pity, all right, upon his neighbor but shall destroy their houses with the sword. So there's going to be a lot of home evasions. You know, and so <laughs> and these times coming up is going to be very dramatic. 
Jacob's trouble is getting ready to hit at an all time high. You know, and it's going to put a lot of fear in people's hearts, their minds. People are going to wish that they could. Uh, uh, they're going to seek death and death shall flee from them. You got to imagine all the different dead bodies is going to be, um, you know, around. No, no uh, burial services or anyone to to lament for them. OK. And those bodies are going to give off diseases. So you're going to have a combination of different calamities coming from everywhere that says. But shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. So the Lord is going to bring hell upon these people that they never witnessed in this life or in their past life. OK. And, you know, <laughs> always say. Be prepared for these times. Those of us that are hopeful, elect, stay tuned in. Stay close to Yahweh by Shemiah Shai. Keep cleaving, cleaving to our power because it's the only way out for us. You know, we believe in this and we have hope that, you know, we're able to make it out if we endure. I want to bring out this last one here. St. Matthew 24. And I think it's 21. It says, for then shall be great tribulation, okay, for their pride, wickedness has exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and the whole and the work for, hurtful works have been fulfilled. And America is the main hub of that, all right? The main hub of these Edomites, the so-called white people's, you know, society, where majority of the influence of wickedness or the influence of the wickedness, you know, comes from, okay? So this great tribulation is going to hit. Babylon the Great, a.k.a. America, the hardest. It says, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. So this great tribulation is going to be one that we've never seen ever. OK, right before this wicked, <clears throat> sinful kingdom goes out. <clears throat> Verse 22 says, and except those days shall should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. And you see the days speeding up. Because we're in those times where um, this great tribulation is getting ready to hit and the Lord is going to speed it up even more. All right, the days and he's doing it as it reads on. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. So the Lord is shortening the days to save the chosen out of the nation of Israel, the elect, the 144,000 men, the governing body and the one third men women and children so the lord care for his elect and that's why you see these things happening the lord really is doing everything for his heritage the nation of israel but it's going to start with the elect praying we're part of that number see i just want to do a lesson on second Ezra, the 15th chapter verse 14 through 19 all praises to yahweh by hashem yahweh shai by hashem rakakwadash double honors to the apostles and the elders of great millstone shalom